and, and make their own scarecrow. Thank you very much. Bruce Township, in conjunction with the Macomb County Sheriff's Department, will host an informational meeting on October 22nd to discuss the possibility of starting a neighborhood watch program in the township. This meeting will be at 7.30 p.m. in the township hall. For any questions you might have, contact Dorothy Sokowitz at 752-4585, extension 113 or email dsockowitz at brucetownship.org. Also from the Sheriff's Department, for all you ATV enthusiasts, the Sheriff's Office will hold an ORV off-road vehicle safety class on October 5th from 4 to 9 p.m. in Mount Clemens. Space is limited, so if you're interested, sign up early. Contact Lieutenant Magan at 586-307-9343. Well, this is a first for Channel 6 News. Logan Fracolosi asked us for help with a question he wanted to ask of Caitlin Hutnick involving homecoming. Hi, I'm Logan Fracolosi, and this is Caitlin Hutnick. And uh, I was wondering if you want to go to homecoming with me. Oh, sure. <laughs> oh, weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, it looks like I'm all set for the homecoming dance. I want to thank Logan for asking me. So come join us at the dance October 10th and watch the game October 9th. There are some minor changes in the homecoming festivities this year. The football game, tailgating barbecue, dance, and other activities will be the same. But instead of each class traditionally building floats, they'll be decorating playhouses that will be auctioned off at halftime. According to High School Activities Director Greg Bryant, this move is to curb the waste and high cost of homecoming floats. And don't forget, this year's annual Crop Walk is scheduled for Sunday, October 4th. Registration begins at 1 p.m. at St. John Lutheran Church at 246 Benjamin Street in the Village. The walk is a fundraiser to help families locally as well as worldwide. There will be two routes to choose from, either a six mile or a one mile walk. But if walking is not your thing, you might consider the rocking chair marathon, where instead of walking, you can sit and rock your way to fundraise. The fifth annual wood carving fest was held at Washington Township Hall last weekend. Carvers came from all over the area to learn and hone their skills. Here is President John Sabina and wood carver Rizel. All right, thanks, Jeannie. Yes, this is the fifth time we've been back here at the Washington Senior Center for CarveFest number five. The, uh, the idea is simply a hands-on carving, carving day. It's actually two days, Friday the 25th and Saturday the 26th. We'll carve from 9 in the morning till 4 in the afternoon on both days. We have nine consecutive projects going on, different instructors showing people how to do something simple, some of them more complex. But the whole idea is to get people out and get them carving, whether they're absolute beginner or experienced people works either way because we have projects good for all levels. The idea is not one that was originated here, but certainly one that has, has prospered here quite well. We expect anywhere from, a, oh, maybe 80 to 125 people probably across the two days and uh, have a lot of fun. The class I'm doing here is called fan carving. It's a European folk art thought to have originated in, on an area between Finland and Russia. Now, the one that I'm doing today and the one I'm teaching in class is called a fan bird. This is cut out of one piece of wood. You start with a piece of white cedar in this shape. You carve the profile of the wings, that is, the profile like this. And then you do an operation called riving. That is, you cut with a fro, you cut along the grain of the wood. It takes about two to two and a half, maybe three hours to do one bird. It looks very complicated, but it really isn't. Before I turn it over to Paul, no, you're not looking at a picture in Scotland. This is just up the road in Bruce Township. The Bruce Mount Station on 36 Mile Road held their annual Sheep and Wool Festival last weekend. Here's owner Ivan Ulanaki to tell us more. This is our 19th annual Sheep and Wool Festival. 
We're located north of Romeo, but we're in the country, and we support country, support fibre, and support sheep. And it's a wonderful place to come to. We serve our own farm-raised lamb. We sell all of our own products, and the wonderful vendors who are here are terribly high quality. What we stress here is learning, education, and top quality of everything from the border collies that you can see herding the sheep to the sheep that are being shorn and understand what we're using the fibre for and the quality of the animals and the way that we maintain them. So all of this is very important to us to have people understand the difference between good and bad. <laughs> we're top quality here and this is our 19th year and we're really proud of it. And now, here's Paul with Bulldog Sports. Thanks, Jeannie. The Varsity Bulldogs football team continues their quest to the state playoffs with a big victory last weekend against Chippewa Valley, 40-7. Ben Brown continues to dominate the offense, scoring touchdowns on runs of six, 7 and 27. He also tossed a 25 yarder to Taylor Briner. Other big scorers for the Dogs were Jason Shermer, who hauled in a 74 yard pass from Elsini, and late in the game, Christian Paletta caught a 20 yard bullet from Elsini. This victory keeps the Dogs in the hunt for the Red Division Championship. This week, they travel to Cousineau. Mark October 9th and 16th on your sports calendar when the Dogs take on Ike at homecoming and then the top ranked Titans come to Dan Barnabo for a game that could be for all the marbles. In other Bulldog news, the varsity soccer team is in first place of the white division of the MAC. They shut out Gross Point South 5 to zip. Captain Robbie Flynn and Saul Arasso both scored twice and Tim Watts added the other goal. The varsity tennis team also had a great week as they beat both Chippewa Valley and Sterling Heights. Then to round out the week, they tied Port Huron. The netters are 3-0-1 on the season. The Lady Swim Dogs dove into the pool last week and came up winners against the Cougars of Dakota. They won 101-82. And congratulations go out to the swimmers for a swim-a-thon they held last week to raise money for Susie G. Coleman Cancer Fund. And on a final note in sports, we want to share a picture that Cindy Wilson sent us that she shot of all the football players on a military vehicle while wearing their pink jerseys. Well, that's it for sports. And before we sign off, I want to announce that Channel 6 News has just won an award in the regional Philo T. Farnsworth video competition. Producers are myself and Gail Corey, graphics and editing by Tara Humphrey, and writing by Richard and Gail Corey. Other winners from Channel 6 include Mark Evans for the 2009 girls basketball promo in the sports entertainment category, and Tara winning for her work with Parks and Recreation Department in their weekly update. Well, that's awesome news about the Philos. Yeah, it is. So for Channel 6 News, so for the award-winning Channel 6 News, we want to thank you for tuning in. Mm -hmm.